So in this section, we're going to be looking at how we find the intersection of graphs and what that actually means. So let's say I've been tasked with finding the coordinates of the points of intersection of the graphs of y equals 6 over x and y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11. Now these are two graphs that we should be able to visualise their shape. Um, but the job that I'm going to first do is I'm going to try and draw these and superimpose them both on the same graph. Okay, now this can be quite fiddly, and it's unlikely that you would be asked to do this in the exam. Okay, so uh, to in order to draw both. Okay, so let's first choose some points to work with. Um, let's have uh, some x's and some y's. So we're going to need some six over x's, and we're going to need some x squareds. Minus 6x plus 11s. Okay. I don't know why I pluralised that, but there you are. Okay, so um, let's start off uh, with just doing things like minus 2, uh, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, let's go a couple more. Uh, 4 and 5. Okay, so what will we have? So 6 over uh, minus 2 is minus 3. Then we'd have minus 6. Then we would have uh, undefined. And then we'd have uh, 6. Then we'd have 3. Then we'd have 2. Then 6 over 4, so 3 halves. And then 6 fifths. Now, for y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11. Okay, so um, I should probably use my calculator to help. Just to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So we're going to have um, minus 2 squared, so 4. Uh, take away 6 times minus 2, so plus 12, plus 11, so 27. And then we've got minus 6. So we'd have 36 um, plus 36 plus 11. So that would be uh, 83. So when x is minus 2, we're going to have uh, 4 um, plus 6 times 2, so plus 12 plus 11. So that's 27. When x is minus 1, we'll have 1 plus 6 plus 11, so 18. When x is 0, we'll have 11. When x is 1, we will have 1 take away 6 plus 11, so 6. When x is 2, uh, we'll have 4 take away 12 plus 11, which is 3. Uh, when x is 3, we've got uh, 9 uh, take away 18 plus 11, which is 2. When we've got 4, we get 16. Take away 24 plus 11, so 3. And uh, when x is 5, we should get 6 because we've hit that symmetry. So just to check, so 5 squared is 25. Take away 30 plus 11, which makes the 6. Okay, So we should have, uh, because that's a quadratic, it's a parabola, we should have that symmetry of the curve. So we should also notice that these two curves hit each other three times. Okay, So there are actually three intersection points, and I have found those three intersection points here. Okay, Now, if only it was that easy okay, <laughs> to do that every time, but I've done this by construction. So the three intersection points will be 1, 6, 2, 3, and 3, 2. So let's now draw a graph of these two functions. Okay, so let's give myself a little bit of space. Okay, so um, we'll have uh, minus 1, minus 2. We'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, 
now. Um, if we have up the y-axis, um, what do we need? Well, we probably need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, something like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, um, let's first of all plot the uh, y equals 6 over x. So we're actually down here for the first couple of points. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. OK, so let's draw those points on. So we're at um, minus 2, minus 3 to start. So that's down here. And then we're at minus 1, minus 6, which is down here. So we know that the curve should look something like that, OK, on that part of the graph. Then we've got the asymptote at x equals 0. Then we're up at 1, 6. We've got uh, 2, 3. We've got 3, 2. Uh, we've got four three halves, which is a little bit tricky for me to draw. So something like that. And then five six fifths, so a little bit over one. So this curve will be doing something like that. Okay. Now, the y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11... OK, now I can't plot minus 2, 27, it's far up my y-axis. I can't plot minus uh, 1, 18, that's far up there as well. 0, 11, that's somewhere up here, somewhere. Um, then we've got 1, 6, so we've got that point. Then we've got uh, 2, 3, which is that point. Then we've got 3, 2, which is that point. Then we've got 4, 3. OK, so we've got this matching point here. OK, and then we've got 5, 6. So something like that. OK, now we know that this curve, um, as it comes round, is going to have to intersect this curve at three points. Okay, so this quadratic is going to come around like so. It's going to have to intersect at that point. Okay, and then going to have to come back around in order to intersect that point, then that point, and then go up to the y axis like that. OK, it's, got, it's quite a challenge to actually draw it. Um, it would probably be a little bit closer because it's got to use that point as its vertex, as its turning point, something like that. OK, so we have these three points, one, two and three, as the intersection points. OK, and this is the picture of what's going on. So... Next stage to really understand this is that when we talk about intersections um, of graphs, then we're asking ourselves, when are the x values and the y values the same? So when is 6 over x, y equals 6 over x, the same as y equals x squared minus 6x plus 11? In order for them to be the same, the y values must be the same. The y values at each of these three intersection points are the same for both graphs. So if the y values are the same, then where it's saying y is this and y is this, these two bits must be the same. So in order for them to be the same, I can write 6 over x must be equal to x squared minus 6x plus 11. So this is using simultaneous equations. 
So, in other words, when we're talking about intersections of graphs, we need to use simultaneous equations. These two terms of intersection and simultaneous equations must become synonymous for you. So, that would mean solving this equation. Now, in order to solve this equation, I need to get all the x's onto one side of the equation. I need to get it equal to 0. So, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So I get 6 equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x. And then I'm going to subtract the 6 from both sides. Like so. OK. So at that point... You know, if, it, if I hadn't have drawn the sketch and I hadn't plotted the points, I wouldn't know what the solutions are. So I'd be at this stage and thinking, right, I need to solve this equation. Now, the way to solve a cubic equation that we know of is to use polynomial division to start off with, in order to f uh, having found a factor. So we're going to need a factor. So we're going to need to try... Uh, numbers, substitute numbers in, that will go into minus 6. Remember the factors, that the numbers that I choose to substitute into must be factors of minus 6. So if f of x, so let's call this a function of x. The first one I would try is 1, f of 1. So I would get 1 cubed, take away 6 lots of 1 squared, plus 11 lots of 1, minus 6. So 1 take away 6 is minus 5, plus 11 is 6, take away 6 is 0. So what this is telling me is that x equals 1 is a root. Hence x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. This is the factor theorem at work. So, if x minus 1 is a factor of f of x, I can use polynomial division. So, I will have x minus 1. Now, I need to get x cubed. So x lots of x cubed, is, well, sorry, x times x squared will make x cubed. x squared times minus 1 is minus x squared. I need minus 6x squared, so minus 5x squared there. x lots of minus 5x will make minus 5x squared, so I'd have 5x there. I need 11x, so that's got to be 6x, so that's got to be 6, that's got to be minus 6, and that matches what I have there. So that means that f of x can be written as x minus 1 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. So that means that this equation here factorises, so I can write it as 0 equals x minus 1 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now this quadratic can factorise and I would have minus 2 and minus 3. So therefore the three solutions, the three roots for this equation, so the roots are x equals 1, x equals 2 and x equals 3. Okay. Now, if I was to um, graph, let's see if I've got a different colour pen, there we are. If I was to graph uh, y equals f of x at this point, so I would have y equals x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. That is a cubic that goes through 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Now, when x is 0, I'm going to have minus 6. So it's actually a curve that goes down through there. OK. And so I would have a cubic
that looks like this. So in other words, what you have is that each of your intersection points of the two graphs correspond to where this graph, this f of x, crosses the x-axis. So the points of intersection of your two curves are precisely the roots of this cubic equation. So because we then have the x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3, I can find the y-coordinates by substituting each of these three into either this quadratic or this reciprocal graph. So when x is 1, I get 6 over 1, which is 6. We have when x is 2, we get 6 over 2, which is 3. And when x is 3, we get 6 over 3, which is 2. And these are the three intersection points. That is the algebraic way of going through this. And this is the visual companion that makes sense of what is going on.